What's up? It is Dave. What's up? Uh, What's up? We are back from Metal Epidemic for another album review. For this review, Duncan and I have been checking out the new album from the Chicago ensemble Huntsman. Windy City. The band's new album, The Dry Land, will be released on June 7th via Prosthetic Records. It's one week every month. <laughs> what? It's a very wet joke. If you're married, it's one week every month. <laughs> the Dry Land. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I thought we were only going to tell jokes on this one this is a serious album so we need to get the humour out at the start so we can focus in on the seriousness of the seriousness I can't I just can't not gonna. Um, okay so Huntsman about to make the return in 2024 with their third album uh, their first full length in four years these guys on your radar before? Yes. Right, cool, right, cool, cool. Um, the dry land traverses the liminal space between the living and the dead by lifting the veil of the abyss itself. Mm. Born of suffering and hardship, the dry land unifies the dark and light that resides in all of us through allegories of purgatorial strife and human spirit. I'm loving the playfulness of the words. Following the release of their sophomore full-length Mandala of Fear in 2020 and the Dying Pines EP in 2022, Huntsman's intervening years between studio albums were marked with devastatingly contrasting highs and lows. Whilst their body of studio work continued to garner acclaim from fans and critics alike, chronic illness would become a re recurring uphill battle for the ensemble, and these jarring mixed fortunes reached their apex towards the end of 2022. The band reached towards each other as old friends. Taking stock of four years of tribulations led to a re-evaluation of what it is to be creatives and in turn ushered in a collective rebirth. Writing sessions saw a number of artistic firsts for Huntsman, most notably with the first full collaborative inclusion of vocalist Amy Bueno Knipe. Uh, the creative process soon saw Huntsman adding more black metal influences into their Americana and folk-tinged doom. Mirroring the circumstances and environment that led to, it, led to its creation, the dry land's pacing is one rooted in the art of rise and fall dynamics both musically and lyrically. Tales of escaping religious violence, malevolent apparitions and death incarnate will play key roles throughout the album's narrative thread. Huntsmen treat each tale as both exorcism and exaltion, adding a pervasively unsettlingly, unsettling quality to the dry land that is sure to stick long after the runtime is over. Uh, the Dry Land was recorded and mixed by Pete Grossman at Bricktop Studios before being placed in the hands of our Lord Brad Boatwright for mastering. <laughs> we love you, Brad. We do. Uh, so, six tracks, just over 42 minutes in length. Uh, the dry land. Um, yeah, we we had really just started Metal Epidemic when Mandala of Fear came out uh, back in 2020. Um, so we didn't actually review the album, um, but I remember liking it when I heard it. You know, that kind of like progressive, sludgy kind of tones with Americana. Mm. Um, it was a long in, not going to lie. Uh, <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Maybe, um, <laughs> oh dear, maybe, uh, maybe stop me returning to it as much as I would have liked. Um, mm. but I think it was a concept album, if memory serves, um, which makes it difficult to dip in and out. Yeah, um, it had like I think there was like four or five instrumentals through it as well. It was quite oh, a wow, hefty right. One. Um, but yeah, so that now brings us to the dry land. What about yourself? What did you think of this? For, for someone that you hadn't checked out the previous album, what did you what did you make of this? No, so from the name, I don't know why I'd like instantly thought sludge or doom, right? right. Like I don't know why. It's just the way my brain I think it's like Mastodon might have a song called Huntsman or Hunter or something, and then I thought Mastodon, and then I was like, maybe it sounds like Mastodon. <laughs> it sounds fuck all like Mastodon, right? So it goes to show never listen to me right until i start talking about an album then <laughs> focus right. in on my words okay um so like 
I don't do the due diligence that you do, right? So to me, uh, I approach, unless I have heard the man before, mm. every listen to me is a brand new experience where oh. I have no context, okay. no background. To me, this might be their first album. It's maybe their 40th album. There's no <laughs> in-between for me. Like, that's how I approach these things. Mm. Very quickly, listening to this, I knew it wasn't their first album because it's very accomplished. Yeah. So I suspected maybe more, but I didn't listen to any of the previous stuff. This was my... Uh, first listen, which does surprise me from what you said in the uh, the PR that this is the first one that includes female vocals. So the last one included female vocals as well, but right. more minimal on that album. This yeah, is well, now... I, like yeah, like what like all like she should be on it more. Right. Like if that was the learning curve, if the yeah. learning curve was this album is long and yeah. she's only on it a wee bit, yeah, make it shorter and she should sing on it more. I think that's a great idea. Yeah, fucking like oh man, it's like. The, the, the voice um right stuff that i liked about huntsman and then we'll talk about some of the stuff that i maybe feel doesn't resonate with me all that well okay um i will say overall i really enjoyed the album i this to me felt um this one felt like an odyssey felt like a like a like we talk we use the word journey a lot um and not as in don't stop believing but as in like you know, like as in like albums that physically take you somewhere when you listen to them. You feel yourself yeah. being transported along during the listen, and at the end you are enriched, travelled and weathered more than you were when you press play at the beginning. And the Dryland is that sort of album. I I felt very much like through every song I understood the the, the, the design, the architecture, the construction of highs, lows, the movements in between. Mm. And the the, the, ca- the craft in songwriting about, right, we've, we've taken it as high as we can at this point, we need to build it back down, deconstruct, deconstruct, and then slowly, painstakingly build it back up for that crescendo finish. Mm. And I'll say that the Huntsmen are masters of that. Like When mm. you listen to this album, the way they can break a track down and then build it back up to the end is flawless. It feels like they could do that many times over, which is all the more remarkable when the average runtime of a song on this album is about six minutes if you parse it out across the entire length of it. You know, they, they have they have tracks that run a lot longer, but you know, they, they have like a full mastery of it. They also have some more tools. In their tool shed. Don't know what the analogy is. <laughs> uh, tools in their tool shed, which I was going to say weapons in their arsenal, but that sounded quite violent. So tools in their tool shed. Right. Cutlery in their cutlery jar. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, arrows in their quiver. I don't know. Um, <laughs> they, they had. They have a lot of things which make them surprisingly interesting to listen to. The big thing is the vocals. Like you're hit with three uniquely different tones on this, mm. which makes it very fun to see how long one will take essentially the weight of the track on their shoulders before handing it off and at what point you're going to get the juxtaposition of more than one vocal style coming in together oh, yeah. there is um, five vocalists yeah right well there we go album. but i picked out three tones so <laughs> fuck me right um but i love that i love that about it as a result of that you get you get like elements that are really smart you can get heavier sections with more melodic vocals and then flip it round to actually more melodic music with more aggressive vocals and they weave these sections in in a very smart composition that genuinely feels like the length of a track is obsolete like this could go 12 minutes and it doesn't matter because the component parts that are making up and the way they're inversing techniques or accentuating techniques is fucking brilliant. Um, this is almost like a mission statement from the opening track. This our gospel, which for the predominant running time of, I mean, it's eight eight minutes fifteen in length. About six minutes of that are driven by very measured melodic, like male vocals, right? Mm. And then we switch up and introduce the female vocals. And at that point, I was like, oh, hello. Um, <laughs> hi there. Uh, let me buy you a drink. Um, and like, I was instantly, I, I, it threw me off. I wasn't expecting it. Didn't know, don't read the press statement. Don't know who's in the band. Didn't know those were women in the band. And our tone just cut through fucking ever. The same way when you listen to Cripple Black Phoenix and you get those female vocals kicking, you're just like, oh, yes. Mm. And they can go aggressive if they want, but when they kick and clean, it's just like, this is what I need. Yeah. Um it came in, and then just as I was settling into melody, there, 
blackened screens <laughs> underneath and I was like, fuck me sideways. This is this is great. Track one finished and I I kind of I was, I was like anxious to get to the next song to see where we went. Mm. And what I loved about track two, Cruel, Cruelly Dawns, um, is that the don't just play the same thing again. I mean, they use a lot of the same techniques, but mm. it's a heavier sounding track. Um, it's also one that's longer, but weirdly feels more focused. Like, mm. it doesn't languish as much. Yeah. Um, and there are huge sprawling sections where things quieten down. The intensity towards the end of the track is is sublime. And like you get, like, almost kind of, like, jazz-style, like, drum filling and build up the this fucking crescendo of noise. And then that takes you into lean times, which is probably the most basic bitch, and I'd say that in the most endearing way. It's the most basic bitch track on here, but there's still fucking loads going on. Mm. It's relatively short by the length of the album, clocks in at about five minutes, ten. Um, and it's a kind of folksy, kind of acoustic y sort of let's strip things back, let's just give you like bearer heart and soul to the audience. Mm. And it really works. Like, you've just come out of ostensibly about 17 minutes of music, um, which has went through peaks and troughs and highs and lows, that you need a little bit of musical sorbet to clean the palate before your next course, and that's exactly what Lean Times does. Lean Times, in a way, where actually the name of the track almost describes the composition and approach to the songwriting. Stripped back, very bare, no room for error, no room for like hiding anything. Very powerful fucking song, like mm. very powerful song. He's watching the back half of the album, which swings in with a big, meaty <laughs> seven and a half minute opus, which is in time all things, which opens with like quasi blast beats and like fucking almost like my, like melodic progressive black metal riffing, mm -hmm. and it's just like right for the jugular, and it like, makes you sit up and pay attention to it. Um, the beauty of this one is they could very easily just go full in and do the heaviest thing they've done on the album. Yeah. But as fast as that track starts, they pull it right back and yeah. they just like they invite you into the sound. It's almost as if they're pushing you away mm. and then at a certain point they bring you in really close. And it's the one of all the songs on here after that blast, like fucking fest, that has huge space. Like, yeah. it stabs and everything rings out and beautiful, but fucking hauntingly beautiful female vocals just, like, meander through the, the, the space. It's it's such a morbidly pretty track to listen to. Mm. I, I, like, I found myself kind of floored by what they did. And then by the time you hit the chorus on this one, we'll talk a little bit more about vocal choruses later on, but the chorus on this one is fucking huge. Like, it's all, like, it's layered vocals and massive sounding and you know it deserves to be heard in an auditorium not at like a fucking smoky venue it's just mm. it's just really 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 cool to listen to um you then get brought back down again because the band are smartly com composing things out there's only six tracks to play with so you get rain rain is like a four minute song it's the second to last track and it's another one that it goes a bit more. It's not. A, it's not acoustic, but it goes a bit more minimal mm. with the sound. I didn't think this was as good as Lean Times, if I'm honest. Mm -hmm. um, which I said, there's some things I like, some things that we're going to get to that. Um, it's a cool track, and it builds up in a really satisfying way. But then I think it leads into like the Herb site, which is the closing track, which is really a tour de force of songwriting. Um, it's one that just exists with the build in mind. Like this is one where I feel kind of like the same way Tool will spend an inordinate amount of time building and building and building. You're like, when's this going to start? Like, whenever you think the drop's going to come, um, it never comes. And Herbsite does that. You're over the halfway mark before things strip down into once again a very Tool esque sort of. We're going to build things back up. And then it leads you into this huge, almost operatic, like, close on the album, which, by the time it closes in at the very end, you just kind of feel this sense of accomplishment. Um, so that's the good, right? I think the vocals are amazing. I think the songwriting is really good. I think the production is fucking 
clean. I mean, you eat your dinner off this production. It's fucking immaculate. This is like two steps away from being pelagic immaculate, right? Mm. She's like very, 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 and it's massive sounding. What I maybe, what maybe didn't resonate, I was just say what I didn't like. And there's nothing I didn't like on this album. I felt the flow of the album was slightly interrupted by track five, Rain. The reason I say that is you have these two massive tracks that open it, and then you go into Lean Times, which is a track that like really does strip everything out. And then you move into End Time All Things, which is a track that hits you hard, mm. creates a massive amount of space, and then builds in. Rain builds a massive amount of space and then builds in at the end. And dynamically speaking, that to me knocked the flow of the album off just a tad. And as a result of that, I felt the quieter bits of Rain, the build up at the start, is a bit too long for what you actually get. A two minute track, which went quiet into those harder sections and into the herb site at the end, to me would have been more satisfying. Musically, though, there's nothing you can pick apart with these guys. Mm. I think their sound is absolutely massive. I think their song composition in general is incredible. The production is phenomenal. The techniques, like, just, uh, it's hard to write a nine-minute song. Really, really hard. I know some yeah. bands do it, but like name bands that consistently write long-form songs well, and you'll actually start to see that that pulls shortens because you utilize similar techniques so you yeah. actually play a riff like slightly longer than it should be played or you know your 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 the outro is fucking three minutes of the track because you're like this will get it to nine minutes um huntsman never do that yeah I, I i constantly felt like every element of every part of every song in isolation um is the perfect length for what it should be played at on the album overall my minor gripe is with the second to last track, which I felt spent a little too a little bit long on the build mm. for the payoff at the end into the next track. But I mean, this is the first track that they're fully utilizing the, the female vocals more. Like that's mm. my only like, like her voice is fucking incredible, mm. and yet that's not to diminish anyone else's vocals on here. The 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 male melody vocals are absolutely brilliant. The black metal vocals, yet yeah, perfect and not overused. Yeah. Not over the tendency to use it on every heavy bit. The band don't do that. It's very, very, very well tempered. But her voice, I could listen to her voice all day. It's yeah. just fucking absolutely sublime. So yeah, Huntsman, not the perfect album by any stretch of the imagination. But as my introduction to the band, I'm gonna be honest. I fucking thought it was great. Mm. Nice. Um. Yeah, I mean, I suppose the difference with me is I've had a bit of the background and I've you've I've had context, the band yeah. Before, so there are some things that I feel like this album is way better in, and then there are other elements where I'm like, oh, I wish you'd maybe kind of done more of what you did on that last album. Yeah. So it's a bit of a bit of a weird one. But first thing is like, yeah, the the runtime is drastically reduced on this album, <laughs> forty two minutes. Like that the previous album was almost an hour and 20 minutes so holy like you're, fucking shit yeah right. you're cutting it in um. half pretty much um <laughs> the double album yeah so like i i i think that works i think it works better here i think they i'm glad they've opted for that more reduced runtime. Mm. um i think it gives this album more impact um but i love the fact that they haven't just released like a stripped down version of mandala of fear like i feel like this album takes more risks um, stylistically and musically, I think that um, the inclusion of the more kind of blackened elements, um, they've pushed that a bit more. Um, they've also kind of pushed a bit more in the progressive side of things mm. and, and on the Americana kind of front. Um, and I think it's made this release more interesting uh, rhythmically. Um, and it's also a shitload more varied in, in tempo, which I think the last album maybe suffered from a little at times. It, it, you know, it kind of stuck to a very kind of mm. similar pace. Um, so yeah, it, it kind of got a little bit repetitive. But on the dry dry land, um, I don't think we have that same problem. The the tempo of these tracks change constantly. Mm -hmm. um, each one of them is different. So you know, some of them you get up to like black metal speeds um, on the likes of in time all things, and then others are purposefully slow and kind of doom paced. Um, also, like vocally, this release is, is crazy varied as well. Like um, Huntsman did get a little bit heavier vocally on Mandala of Fear um, mm -hmm. at times. Um, and I get, again, they've added that in throughout this album as well on the, the Dryland, but 
Uh, for me, it's always been about the the cleans that impressed me with Huntsman. Um, and here, once again, it's so well if done. If you can sing like this, why scream? I've said yeah. this a million times before. I understand the element of it, but if that's what you have in your band, right. fucking lead with that. Yeah, this is like it's layered, it's harmonised, it's full of depth. Um, but as I said earlier, the difference this time is they've utilised Amy's vocals even oh, more on right. this release. Which I think the last the last album was kind of crying out for it. Like it was when they kept dropping in little bits and were just like yeah. more, like <laughs> give us more of that. Um, and I think the addition of that cleaner, more like that purer kind of female register, it just like amplifies the melodies yeah. even more. Um, but like as I said, like every member of the band is contributing vocals to this album. That's nuts. Um, and when they come together, um, it's it sounds huge. Like. I love the, the layering on Crowley Dawns, um, where they've got all those melodies, but they, they kind of layer that harsh vocal on the top, um, on top of the cleans, it sounds immense. Um, but then when they strip it back on like lean times with that acoustic guitar and mm. that kind of like folky haziness, it's really, it's special. Um, it's it's, it's some, sometimes quite kind of retro sounding, but there's something contemporary about it at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that, that track in the kind of middle of the album was perfect, like the way they kind of build that up into like almost like a heavier version of the track was just it's a great moment on the album um, and then they do take you in a like the extreme opposite direction on to that um on in time all things which is like coated in this like dark and menacing kind of journey of black metal and proggy melodic sludge um and then it kind of yeah as you said it kind of strips down in the middle but then they bring it back towards the end with a bit more of that kind of black and stuff as well um, and I think it's that type of like detour on this album that makes it much more interesting, mm. like structurally, than the last release. Um, some, some, you know, some tracks they have kept, as you said, kind of basic, more kind of simple. Um, but I think that's a good thing as well. I think it, it stops the album becoming too like overwhelming with changes and switch switch ups. Um, I, I quite liked um, Rain. I think um, it sits mainly in that kind of like doomy territory, but with plenty of melody, a good mix of like vocal textures. It's got a big kind of reverb laden solo in it as well mm -hmm. and structurally it's fairly straightforward um as opposed to like earlier tracks like this or gospel or cruelly dawns which are much more kind of epic um the album closer was the one that i wasn't totally sure of um oh, wow right it kind of it took me a while to for it to kind of grow on me to be honest um it starts very slow and very doomy but then gets more kind of progressive as it goes on brings in kind of vocal harmonies and then there's kind of more harsh vocals come in. It gets very kind of like Tom heavy, lots of build up. Um, and I did I did like the track. Um, I thought the big harmonies towards the end were really cool. Um, but I don't know if it completely satisfied me as a, like an album closer. I was just like, all right, okay, that was okay. Um, but I also think, and this is where I'm kind of comparing the, the previous album. So you've got context that I don't have. So. Um, I felt like the, the vocal hooks on this release are maybe not quite as memorable as mm. Mandala of Fear. Now, granted, Mandala of Fear was like an hour and 20 minutes. So, like, there was loads of stuff on that album and they concentrated a lot on kind of melodic vocals. Um, but the, the vocal, even the vocal kind of melodies and stuff on the previous album were a little bit simpler in the, the kind of formula. So they mm. kind of stuck with you a little bit more. Um, these certainly sound bigger and like more kind of epic sounding, but maybe not quite as catchy overall as the, the previous release. Um, production wise like it, it sounds awesome I, I wouldn't say this is miles apart from the previous release to be mm -hmm. honest um they are very similar in tone uh both very like just organic sounding um, this one maybe sounds a little bit smoother around the edges um which maybe makes the blend a little better and um, when they jump styles but um they've never really had a bad production to be honest that they just become more refined kind of as each release comes out um, yeah, so another like another really enjoyable release um, from Huntsman. I think if you've if you've heard the previous album um, and you had issues with the the length and the lack of uh, clean female vocals, then this is definitely something you'd check out because there's a lot more of that. Um, but it's kind of stripped back to just over kind of forty minutes in length. Um, yeah, another enjoyable one. Um, definitely check this one out if you're a fan of the band or even just like that kind of you know lengthy, progressive, sludgy kind of doom stuff. Um, loads to enjoy like this this album is packed with with ideas and really cool elements um score wise what we're thinking what yeah what uh, are you going for on the, the yep. dry land so i'm coming in at 3.5 um oh. i think the like i say i love the female vocals 
as much as there was on this, I think it could do with more. Um, mm. I think she's got a very inviting tone. Something about like female vocal tones that sit in kind of sludgy, doomy stuff where it can sound like sickly sweet but also haunting mm. and she seems to be able to skirt between the two really really well yeah. like i say i think the songs are really well composed i think they they all feel honestly like like they're little standalone elements mm. um rain for me is the bit where the album it doesn't derail but the flow that i had coming through it like every time i hit that song i just feel like it takes too long even though it's short to get to the bit that I want it to be at. Mm. When I get that bit, I would maybe have had a little bit more of that before Herbicide, which actually to me feels most, the, the one that's most like Tool, which is maybe why I like it more than you <laughs> like it. Um, so yeah, as an introduction to the band, I thought it was really fucking good. So mm. I'd be curious to see, I mean, obviously a bit of time between the previous release and this yeah. one, uh, a bit of maturity in their songwriting. I'd be curious to see where they go from here, but 3.5 from me. Nice. Um, I'm a four out of five on this one. Um, I think there's definite elements where they've improved on this release. Um, like the, the good stuff on this album is really fucking good. Mm. Like they are very, very good at what they do. Um, I love the fact that they have kind of reduced it a bit, a bit in the length. I think that works. Um, but then there was elements on that previous album. I think I wish they'd kind of included more of in this album. Um, but you know, both albums are, are very kind of similar um, quality wise there's not a huge amount in it to be honest um, I think I might come back to this one more just because mm. it is a bit more compact in length yeah. um, and I do like the inclusion of, of Amy's vocals a bit more in this one as well so I'm going to go 4 out of 5 on this one um, so the new album from Huntsman The Dry Land is out on June 7th on Prosthetic Records links below to the band to the pre-order check them out have a listen see what you think and that is the review. Thank you for checking out. We'll be back with another review very soon. But until then, take care. Speak to you soon. Bye, everyone.